in this video we are reacting to that park places video on disney adults there is a lot to dive into this was a fascinating video by that park place we're going to break it down talk about it up next on og 55. <laughs> Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55, where we are breaking down and reacting to that Park Places video on Disney adults. It's going to be a fascinating, fascinating discussion. But before we dive into the reaction video, I have two very special guests down below. We got Mr. Jay Shear, host of the Story Geek Show here on the channel. Welcome back, Jay. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be on these videos. I don't get to do them all the time. You guys are doing these like, videos daily. You guys in that park place are keeping YouTube fully funded with all the videos you guys are doing. <laughs> so I love it. It's gl I'm glad to be here, and it's going to be a fun conversation today. Absolutely. Here, I'll chime you in, Jay. You're official. <laughs> you are official. <laughs> and right over here, we got Sisters George, other otherwise known as the Italiano, looking Italiano. like... Uh, Looking like Maverick or Goose over here with the glasses. I'm yeah. loving it, George. <laughs> uh, it's 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 my thing. It's like when we get like these in depth conversations. It's like I got to come in with some style. So it's like <laughs> let's let's bring the Godfather meets Top Gun. It's like <laughs> yeah. there we go. Absolutely. If you can let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, my good friend. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, at Disney George. You could also find me on the podcast, A Walk with Walt. And of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, I got to chime you in as well. Make you official. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to start with a little bit of a, of a little bit of a disclaimer. Like I do with all of these reaction videos, um, we're going to break this reaction video down. Now, there's going to be things in this video that us we might not agree with um and that's okay right we're gonna we're gonna kind of break it down analyze it we may agree with these gentlemen on some things we may disagree but zero animosity nothing like that i you know people like to sometimes make drama where there is none i want to make that very very clear like i've made it with all of these reaction videos also i will say in the comments keep it civil okay if we get any comments attacking anyone over at that park place it won't be tolerated okay we keep it we keep it friendly now you that you know you can disagree with them in the comments that's fine just keep it respectful and no personal attacks and what have you cool cool all right let's go ahead and join the party i'm gonna go ahead and play we're gonna start off with jonas j campbell and we're gonna go from there and and gentlemen if you want me to stop along the way to say hey og stop it and if you want to chime in so over the last 100 years, the Walt Disney Company has gone from a children's entertainment company to a family entertainment company. And now a new segment appears to be the focus of everything at Walt Disney. Let's talk about that here on That Park Place. Welcome to That Park Place. I am Jonas J. Campbell. And uh, the other day on the That Park Place live stream that we did celebrating the 100 year anniversary of the Walt Disney Company, we brought in Valiant Renegade, WDW Pro, and Vash Sky to talk about uh, a strange new phenomenon. If you're following the theme park space, it might not be that strange to you, but to the Walt Disney Company, they seem to be catering towards a very specific segment of the market. No, it's not kids. No, it's not families. It's Disney adults. Disney adults have become quite a controversial topic within the theme park space because when you're catering to adults that want to engage in fantasy play, you might center your theme park in different ways. Epcot could have been the genesis with this, where they're drinking around the world in food and wine festivals, but this philosophy seems to have gotten into different parks. Either way, uh, let's join the conversation. Confessions of Disney adults, this out of variety. The Mouse House superfans talk splurging on merch oh, Lord. and keeping execs in check. <laughs> oh, oh, you'll love how they keep the execs executives in check uh, good lord bro. oh this oh, you, you mean when they applauded bob Iger and josh d Morrow on the streets of main street when they when they came K keeping him checked that way okay. oh this yeah is oh, one yeah. of the things i was going to talk about later but you know I, to be fair though i mean that's true vash is right on that i mean he you know bob Iger was royalty that day he, he made his first appearance at disneyland after coming back in november i gotta say though i mean the fandom has been pretty Pretty tough on Bob Iger ever since. I mean, it's not like he's gotten a free ride. I see a lot more 
critiques out there, not just from the fandom, also from like Hollywood and what have you. So, mm. you know, he's but I'd also kid. I'd also say actually through Iger himself, because through a, a few of those quarterly earnings, he was not the 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 jolly person that everyone has known him to be. I mean, he took he took some some fire shots at some of the uh, the uh, the callers that came in that were asking yeah. the questions, and he was not happy. So I think it was kind of that that notion where Iger actually finally got to realize the mess that he left the company and the mess that he came back into. Oh yeah, no, you could tell he's he's feeling that pressure, and it's not the same Bob. It's not the same Bobby Iger we saw a few years ago. This is a whole different Bob Iger. This is a wartime Iger, um, completely different man. Completely let's, not, different. let's not pretend to that that Bob Iger with his with his PR team that he has. Let's not pretend they didn't like seed some people in there, possibly too, right? Like, right. I mean, this guy is one of the most savvy PR people there are on the planet. This guy knows PR through and through, so. It, that kind of stuff wouldn't totally surprise me if they were like, hey, let's get some cast members who really like tomorrow and have them come on over here and then they'll get a little clap here and there. I can see yeah. that happening. But oh. uh, quick, quick shout out. Um, I think that most people on the internet today would react to this article the same way that WDW Pro just did, where he's like, dear Lord, what is going on here? This, this is, that's a really funny reaction. So shout out to these guys. Um, like like uh, OG said in the beginning, you know, we interact with the, these guys a lot on X. Uh, we disagree. We, we throw out our opinion. So shout out to these guys for, for uh, doing the work here. And we're glad we get to react to them and maybe disagree here and there. But um that was a really funny it's a really funny <laughs> moment so shout out to pro for that for that absolutely this week in that video about disney's creative bankruptcy does anybody else out there notice how many articles there are out there in the past few months referring to talking about disney adults yes yeah. i think it's, they put new, karen uh, catnips in the ears when they sell those things that's the only well, only solution i can come up with for, for why people are doing this and here's like, the, why, here's, why do they want to waste their money on this stuff well, here's the interesting. Here's the thing with Disney adults, though. Disney adults, this topic, I don't think there's anything really nefarious here. Like, I don't necessarily think that, like, Disney is, like, telling these publications, hey, mention Disney adults. This topic comes up every few months, it, whether it be in print media, whether it be in, in fan circles or what have you. It's like the Disney Apple uh, buyout rumor. Th that thing, ha every six months we hear this rumor come, come about, come, you know, rear its head again. The Disney adult thing has sort of been a thing, a consistent thing um, in media now uh, for a while. And it'll, it'll come, it'll go away, it'll come back. I, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily think there's anything going on here. But like Jay, what you, like what you mentioned earlier, Bob Iger is a PR king. It's possible he's feeding this. I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Jay? Well, okay, so so I was going to get into this a little bit later, but we might as well jump into it now because okay. one of the things that most of this video is talking about it are, is the concept of a Disney adult. Now, the problem with that, with those two terms in combination with one another, is that they leave a lot of room for interpretation. Right? I was watching a uh, a JoJo Crichton video. Shout out to JoJo, um, and he was walking around the Disney parks asking people like, "What do you think of Disney adults?" And it was obvious based on the question and the responses that there's a lot of different definitions of what a Disney adult is. So, I think the first thing we need to do is we need to define what do we mean when we say Disney adults because. I think that there's an argument to be made that everybody on our video today and everybody on their video is a Disney adult, right? Like you're a, right. you 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 care enough about Disney that you create a YouTube channel about it, multiple YouTube channels in some cases, right? Right. Um, we all, I think, I, I you know, I've seen Dre go on a trip. George, you and you, OG, and George went on a trip. I'm going to go to Disneyland twice this year on a trip. Uh, I know that I think, uh, Pro was out there at Disney World, you know, like not that long ago. In other words, we are all adults who are going to Disney, right? So, so the weird part of this term, and I'll throw it over to you guys to get your take on it, but the weird part of this term is when do we apply the term to somebody and when do we not apply the term to somebody? Because we're going to go through, they're going to give examples of some of the people that they call Disney adults here. And I would yeah. tell you that there, there are differences between, let's say, you or me or the person they're going to reference. 
but I do think we needed to, to kind of define what we mean by it, right? Um, mm-hmm. Because once we define what we mean by it, if we say, okay, a Disney adult is not a fan of Disney who also happens to be an adult. It's something w- wor- worse than that or more extreme than that. And they're like, okay, fine. What is it, though? Because the term gets thrown around a lot, and it's a very confusing term in my mind. So what do you guys think see, about that? See, I always took the term not as a derogatory term. Anytime I heard... Mm disney adult i always say yep that's me i'm a disney adult i'm an adult who loves disney i literally eat sleep and breathe it every single day there's not one day that goes by that i do not incorporate disney into my lifestyle Mm. and that's why i always tell people that i say disney for me is not a hobby it is a lifestyle it's my Mm. lifestyle that i Mm. choose now as when you mentioned jay there's different variations of a disney adult so which kind of term are we referring to for instance like i had this conversation with og on over the phone at times where you can have a disney adult which uh wdw pros team will get into it later on in the video that they mention about um like desserts or Mm. or beverages there are adults that will go and buy a specialty dessert or a beverage take snapshots of it, do a little mini video on it Mm -hmm. and create on their Instagram or on their YouTube. That for me is not my cup of tea. Right. That's something that I'm not into when I go to a Disney park, but at the same time, I can still relate to them as a Disney adult because that's just how they do Disney. Right. Right. Yeah. Disney adult to me is, is a lifestyle. It's, mm. it's people who, who are like the super fans, like it says here on the, on the title here, the super fans who go maybe regularly, um, you know, just real avid fans of Disney. Right. Mm. But the thing that I don't understand here is that, okay, there's a lot of Disney adults that are f- fucking weird. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there are, <laughs> there, there are a lot of Disney adults that are fucking weird. There, there's no lie. There's no, I mean, well, there you go. Yeah. OG, you just found the title of the video. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. There you go. So that's why I kind of have an issue with the, with the lumping them all together because it's like, okay, look, I'm a Disney adult, but like, you know, I'm into Disney. I'm into Disney parks specifically because I think that themed entertainment, um, I think themed entertainment in general is an interesting thing. You know, it mixes um, imagination, creativity, architecture, um, even like urban design and all that stuff. And like, I don't see anything necessarily wrong with being a fan of those things. You can be an adult, be a grown ass man and appreciate those things. I feel like when people kind of come for Disney adult, they sort of treat Disney adults like, like, like um like children like they're mm. you, oh you, you guys and gals you, you're not really adults right you're in a disney <laughs> you don't even have you don't even have kids and you're going to disney oh, you're a weirdo you know <laughs> you, you know fa- failure to launch kind of mentality and i don't necessarily agree with that i think there's a lot of a lot of adult stuff at these parks that you can appreciate and, and it doesn't make you necessarily a weirdo. Not to say, like i said there aren't weirdos in this community there absolutely mm. are but <laughs> but um yeah, so I, I don't know. I think it's it's used a lot of a lot of times as a derogatory term, um, but like you gentlemen said, there's different tiers as well, right? Like, look, I'm a I'm a Disney adult. I would consider myself a Disney adult. I go to the parks maybe you know once a month. I have an annual pass. Um, you know, I buy merch, but not a whole lot of merch. Mm-hmm. I, I you know I'm a fan of Disney. I've been a fan my whole life. But I can look at any gentleman on this panel right here, and I would say, well, they're probably Disney adults too. I know Vash; he he just got back from Disneyland. Uh, he went to Disney World with us. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got mm-hmm. all kinds of attraction posters behind him and in his screen, you know, in his screen uh, right there. So, you know, he's a big fan as well. So, what makes a Disney adult like what makes the what makes a Disney adult acceptable and inacceptable and that's what i'm still kind of like trying to and that's where i feel like it really shouldn't be unacceptable as if it's not hindering my experience and it's not bringing any harm to me but it 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 brings enjoyment to the person that is doing whatever they're doing whether they're taking a picture of a cupcake whether they're standing in a three hour long line for a two minute ride you know if hey if that's what makes them happy then 
you go be you. You know, right. I don't see nothing wrong with it. Now, if it hinders my experience where it's like I'm trying to watch something and someone has a plate in front of my face holding up a fucking cupcake, <laughs> no, that cupcake's going to go onto the ground. It's, it's, <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I think I think maybe what we want to do, too, just, just to throw this in there real quick. I sure. think that we should all, by the end of this video given the, the some of the evidence that they present along the way we should all tell tell like where's the line for us like where yeah. it, where does someone go from like this is a disney adult who i have a lot of respect for i think that they're cool and then here's where they become fucking weird <laughs> right like, <laughs> like i think because i think that that's that would be helpful to the conversation to say like yeah. this is where it kind of gets for me and it's probably different for the three of us right it's probably different for the four of them but this is the line at which it's like it's gone too far and I think we should just figure that out by the end of the and, and and that that's mine. Just keep the cupcake out of my my view of sight. <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> Adults, they could splurge here and there, but compared to an average family uh, going to Disneyland, it's not even close. And as uh, VR actually referenced in a video that he did, the uh, Un American video, which you absolutely should see, going over some numbers from uh, Rasmussen. Well, families have dropped off in spectacular fashion. So the only uh, the only guys left in order to, uh, you know, <laughs> take all the money that they can from is Disney adults. So this so is I was asking. OK, so this is where I'm going to push back a little bit. I, I, I don't agree with this idea of like, well, Disney's focusing on Disney adults hmm. and they're doing it because they're the only fans left. Right. And I, I don't even really think necessarily they are just focusing on Disney adults. But let's just say for argument's sake, they are. I don't think it's that. Like if they're focusing on Disney adults right now, I think it has more to do with the economy. And what I mean by that is like, and and I talked to Vash about this on our show when he was a contributor at OG55. We talked a lot about this. When the economy is down, you have to focus more on the locals because that 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 tr that tourism money is drying up. So these Disney adults are likely locals who frequent these parks on the regular, right? So, yeah, in an economic downturn, you're going to look to them who are local, who have more access to these places. I don't think it's necessarily like, oh, wow, well, the family, the, the average family just hates the mouse now. I guess we got to focus on the on these uh, super fans. I don't think that's the case, in my opinion. Go ahead. Well, go and, ahead I, and, and I also think, too, it actually harkens back to Walt Disney himself. You know, when he said that he made these places for the young and the young at heart, you know, for the children and the adults to have fun together. So I feel like as time went on, there is just different. And I feel like this is where it kind of separates universal because this is where you can bring the three-year-old and you could also bring the 93 year old, you know? So there's very different elements to these parks that depending on your age, depending on your maybe your your if your physicality your your um your health your way of living your health you know your your time era that we you know so there's different ways that you can enjoy disney where yeah to someone who may be a thrill junkie like me you know i i go on everything where a person like og like can look at me and say george you're fucking out of your mind <laughs> like it's like yeah i you know i'd be you know getting like sick on all this but it's that's where we share the same common ground it's we right. both love disney we both want what's best for the company Right. But we just do Disney on our own separate ways. But there are also things where you and I come together where we're sitting at the Grand Californian chilling, having a sandwich, drinking a beer. Right. You know, it's like and, and then there's times where it's like, you know, I could say, you know, I want to go on Mission Breakout. And you're like, you know what? I'll meet you at the exit. You know, that's, <laughs> that's like, you know, well, so. <laughs> yeah, no, 100 percent. And this is what I also want to touch upon. They, they, they mentioned the Rasmussen poll that said families are falling off. And, and I haven't seen that poll, so I'm not really, really sure. I can't really speak on that individual poll. But I don't necessarily see that in 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 the real world. And what I mean by that is, is you, you look at stuff going on. Like Disneyland has been fucking packed. OK, it's been really, really busy um, this year. Um, even things like the Spider-Verse, right? And I know what people are going to say. Well, oh, gee, that's a Sony movie. But this is the thing. The average parent, the average soccer mom taking their kid to go see Spider-Verse has no idea of the intricacies of the Sony Marvel <laughs> deal. Okay? They're not into it like that. They're not into it like we are when we're in this bubble. When they take their kid to go see Spider-Verse, they're assuming that's a Disney movie. It's Spider-Man. That's a Disney brand. 
So it didn't stop families from going in droves to see the Spider-Verse. A lot of those families have no idea what the Sony deal is. Um, it doesn't stop people from, from going on the cruise lines. It doesn't stop people from going to Disneyland, at least. It's been packed. So it's like this idea that, like, well, families gave up on the mouse. I just don't see evidence of that. Now, look, but, I do well, see things that do have done have done less well or have even flopped, like Strange World and things like that. But but that doesn't speak to the overall brand. I don't think people have given up on Disney itself. Go ahead, George. I'm sorry, brother. No, no, no. You're fine. I didn't want to cut you off. But it, it's honestly, it's it's like you had mentioned the cruise. They have a whole complete deck dedicated to young kids. You know, you have the uh, the Oceaneers Lab. You have the Oceaneers Club. You have um, in in the parks. You have the the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. You know, that caters to young children. You know, Disney does a lot of stuff with the Make-A-Wish Foundation that allows a lot of uh, uh, sick children to visit the parks and have a a Disney experience. So to kind of just label it as that Disney is just honed focus on adults i i don't see that i th mm. that i do agree i i agree with you but i disagree to their yeah. notions what, what, do, what do you think jay what's your take on that well now we know why we can't show up to the podcast in aviators because we're not we're not balls to the wall we're not on the thrills junkies like george is here <laughs> we're, we're, yeah. og and i are st stay off to the side having a churro while george is riding uh mission breakout um no uh so a couple a couple things one there's been a clip uh, just kind of circling around of uh, an interview with Walt Disney where they ask him, like, what's the primary makeup of the parks in terms of age? And Disney kind of goes, well, we got a lot of teens, but we've also, you know, a bunch of the people that show up are actually oldsters. He calls them oldsters, which I think is a better name than Disney adults. Um, and I think from the inception of Disneyland, it's it's meant to be a place where families can show up of all ages, of all uh, races, of all ethnicities, of all, uh, you know, maybe not always of all uh, income levels. That's a, that's right. a thing that we should probably talk about. But um, but it's been a place that um, people can, can interact with their families at. And I think what's changed is that the definition of family has changed slightly over the years. We've become a populace that is not quite as... Um, we are not quite as tight knit as we used to be, right? Families live apart from each other. Families don't live. Um, families uh, are defined differently. My wife and I have two. We have a dog and a cat. We're the childless millennials, right? I'm an old millennial, right. but I'm still a millennial. So I think that the definition of family has somewhat shifted. And so I think that when when they kind of they, they kind of talked about like catering to Disney adults, um, one and VR even brings this up later, which we'll get into, but one. That's a smart business move in some cases. In other cases, it's maybe not the smartest business move, but there are other economic factors that are preventing people from spending. And let's not forget that Disney is coming off of um, the revenge travel years right. where a lot of people couldn't go anywhere internationally or it was very difficult to go somewhere internationally and they chose to stay domestic well where are you going to go if it's, you're going to stay domestic they went to we have data on this they went to theme parks and they went to um, national parks a lot of people did that over the, over the course of the ending of the pandemic years and so i think i think that there's a lot of factors that go into this um but i do think that disney Disney has very sophisticated systems. They look at a family and they go, how do we extract maximum value from a family? They look at a childless millennial like me and they go, how do we extract maximum value from Jay? They, there's differences in what they're going to do. If they say to, they're going to say to a family, like, I'm not going to show up at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, guys. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not doing that. I'm, I know you guys would like to take me there next time I'm out, but I'm not, I don't, I'd rather not go there. But I will go and have a drink with you guys. Well, guess what? Disney's charging me $20 for a drink that should be 15. I mean, like uh -huh. that's, that's the way Disney extracts money from different groups of people. And let's remember, this is a, a, a holdover from the Chapek era. Chapek said, we're going to maximize per guest value and profitability. And so, yes, do they, are they, do they do things that maximize their ability to get me to spend more money, yes. And that is kind of a good thing if you're a Disney shareholder because right. that means more money for the company. So there, it's a complex issue here that we're talking about. Well, it, it is complex because it, here's the thing too. Okay, so the pricing is high. It is it, the, like the annual passes are very expensive. The tickets are very expensive. 
all that. We all know that, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, that is a barrier to entry, right? Yeah. For a lot of people, right? So let's just say we take away that barrier of entry. Let's just say we make really super, super cheap, super affordable. Like I'm talking like Knott's Berry Farm pricing for Disney. Well, then you have another problem though that you create when you get rid of that problem. Now the new problem is overcrowding. Mm. Well, fans don't want that either, right? Oh, I don't want to go to Disney and have to wait in a five hour line to ride Peter Pan. So they don't want the high prices. They don't want to wait in a line though once they get in the park. <laughs> And okay, so what what do you have left? Well, okay, well, well then we'll do a reservation system. Well, fans don't want that either. <laughs> I want to pay next to nothing. I want to I want to get in I want to get in the park and not wait in line. And I don't want a goddamn reservation system. Well, <laughs> how do you expect that to work out? It's it's not realistic. It's not realistic. You know, and that's why to your credit, Jay, like when you said it's complicated, it's very complicated. And that's why as fans, we want these ideal circumstances. But sometimes you just got to sacrifice a little. You know, it's not so cut and dry sometimes. Yeah, rhetorically. And look, even uh, 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 who was it recently talked? Oh, it was, it was Samba with the finale numbers for Ahsoka, was yes. it not? Talking about the biggest over-indexed audience for that show was specifically older millennials. Not millennials, but older A really quick point here, like OG. 35. Um, that is predominantly likely due to the fact of when the Clone Wars came out and the fans of the Clone Wars moving forward to see Ahsoka. Because if you don't have a lot of that context, that's a tough show to watch without context. It's like, right. who are the Mortis gods? What are they talking about? So I think that that show has a tie-in. Not that, not that anything being reported here is incorrect. Not at all. But I'm just saying that there is probably a reason for that that is not necessarily related to... Um, like the the demographic makeup is the are the people who did watch Clone Wars and grow up with Clone Wars, so it that, kind of makes sense. That's a great point. And a lot of these gentlemen on this panel w are are advocates for the original trilogy. Well, do you think that you're going to get get a younger demo with the original trilogy? That's going to be all Gen Gen X and Boomers mostly, right? With that, because that's much older than 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 even the Clone Wars stuff. So I think that um, you're right, Jay. I think it's the Clone War generation and i think that even if you dip into some other stuff like the ot you're dealing with even older so i don't necessarily think that star wars is aging out i just think certain elements or certain eras of star wars maybe you're going to get a different demo correct um, so yeah it's interesting to 39 year olds that would be the oldest band of millennials and and again all the talk about disney adults it's like it's just more signs that disney is literally aging out of the demographic groups there Right. There. And the interpretation there is it, 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 we can only guess, but this happens a lot where a company loses market share and then all of a sudden ooh, ooh, movie theaters are a great example. Almost mm -hmm. no one shows up except Latinos who go to the theaters. And so they say, oh, this movie is popular with Latinos as opposed to no, it's just unpopular with everybody else who doesn't always go to the movie. theater. Exactly. But see, the, I don't. OK, I was a little bit confused with Jonas's analogy here. Mm. If the theater is all Latinos. Then something's going on. Like it obviously, <laughs> it, it's obviously of interest to Latinos, right? Or am, am, am I missing something with this analogy? Or I think if if that's the case, I'm going to the wrong movie theater. <laughs> I think what he's trying. I think what he's trying to say is is uh, a good point. Um, shout out to Jonas. Jonas, what's up? Uh, he and I interact all the time on X. Um, I think what he's trying to say is that if you have a demographic makeup that generally speaking likes what you do. Um, and then, then that demographic starts to pay to access that product or service. And then as everybody else starts to divest from that product or service, you're left with the one demographic who still loves it. And so what he, it. I think what he's trying to say is he's trying to say like the, the, the way to spin that is to say, this movie is really popular with this particular demographic, even though the reality is every other demographic has been like, ah, it's kind of shitty. I don't like it anymore. So, it. so I think what he's trying to I think it's a good point. Um, I think it's a good point because it's saying, and, 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 and let me say this too. Um, this is going to take me off on a totally other tangent, but like when we analyze Disney adults and, and to be clear about what um, the definition of a Disney adult tends to be millennials Let's just for the sake of saying who's a millennial, the oldest you can be as a millennial is born in 1980, 
right? So the, born in 1980 to probably born in like probably I don't I don't know what the end of it is. It's probably around the turn of the millennium, so it's probably around 2000. Those are that's your millennial group, right? Um, so for example, I am an elder millennial because I'm in my <laughs> early 40s, right? I was um, born in the early 80s, so I'm an elder millennial. Um, we have to. A lot of this conversation is about people who are fans, right? Fan. Yeah the word fan a derivative of the word fanatic right so right. so if we look at that we have to look at i grew up in the 80s what was one of the most popular things in the 80s in terms of entertainment in southern california which is where i grew up the los angeles lakers it was winning time baby the lakers were the one of the biggest things around and there, there, that carried through to the 90s, to the 2000s, all the fans that became Lakers fans because it was the coolest thing around in L.A., in the L.A., Southern California area. That team became so big that they would be all over the radio. If the, I, I was a Clippers fan because I got super tired of rooting for the Lakers and having Shaq and Kobe fighting, I was done. And I was so sick and tired of hearing about the Lakers because everybody wanted to talk about the Lakers. They were the big deal well when you move into transition into the 90s the 90s was the disney afternoon eisner was doing a bunch of cool stuff in the parks i remember indiana jones coming out mid 90s the indiana right. jones ride that made disney a household name it made people my age and slightly younger recognize literally we would we would come home from school and be like we're going to sit down in front of the tv because the disney afternoon's about to start so you're taking that group that same so the decade before us were lakers fans <laughs> a decade in my decade in the 90s when i was growing up into my teens that was disney fans there's not a lot of difference between these fandoms both businesses are trying to cater to those fandoms to a degree to get those fans to pay them money but i think that we can make some comparisons to other big fandoms that have existed and this generation is a pretty big fans of disney because of how big disney was in the 90s right 100 percent. well said actually right so uh, let's let's read a little bit of this uh Please. this woman kj uh, yasman says i am undeniably a disney adult whenever i have time and funds i head to one of disney's six resorts across the world she says resorts instead of uh theme parks because there's uh, about 10 That's, or 12 yeah, those, yeah. she and and she wants it to sound more mature this yeah. is going to be great <laughs> where i can feel my problems <laughs> melt away quicker than a mickey bar in the midday sun the air brims with excitement strangers wave at me from rides and suddenly my biggest dilemma is whether to hit a haunted mansion or it's a small world first unfortunately you can't live in the disney parks i checked so i've done the next best best thing and infused my london apartment and wardrobe with all things disney there's my there's the mrs potts bone china teapot from tokyo disneyland oh my the lord four hundred dollar <laughs> lego cinderella castle my husband and i built for my 30th birthday he's the a happy next. man the Baymax backpack I snagged in the Disney store in Shanghai, which, by the way, garners more compliments than any designer purse. Uh, you you can get the the general idea uh, of this. Oh, here's here's a good quote. Disney's pretty ingrained into every aspect of my life, says Francis Dominic Garcia, a Disney influencer whose pop culture and theme park content has garnered a healthy Instagram following. But we'll we'll skip down uh, here towards the end. Real quick, I just want to make a point here with this. Any brand would kill to have this kind of following, this kind of almost religious following of their brand. And I'll bring up another brand that actually has a very similar following to Disney, which is not mentioned in this video, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll bring it up. Give me one moment. Just a moment. The Harry Potter franchise. Mm. Okay, these are these are super fans of Harry Potter. Now, this is a very normal thing. You go to Wizarding World at Universal, you see a lot of adults. You know, what, what, what do we call those? Are those universal adults, I guess? You see a lot of adults <laughs> dressed like wizards and stuff like that, right? Now, I don't see much difference between doing that, the fantasy, the whole thing, mm. and being upset. Look at Maria York is dressed as Professor, Professor McGonagall sitting in her living room, right? I mean, come on. This is the same thing as these Disney adults that they're kind of, you know, kind of mocking a little bit right now. Yeah. But look, I mean, you even have like here. I mean, they're, they're like at Lowe's, like a Home Depot or something dressed like Harry Potter. And, you know, it's, it's wild. It's absolutely wild. She says she has spent over 40,000 
pounds, okay, on Harry Potter merchandise, collecting over 2,500 items. Okay, in American dollars, I already broke it down for everybody. It's almost $50,000 worth of Harry Potter merch. So what you're seeing here with Harry Potter, these super fans, these Potterheads, what's the difference? You see, it's the same thing as these Disney adults, but you don't see the same kind of like negative connotation around this. Why? I have no idea, but this is what happens when you have a popular brand of anything. You're going to get the super fans, the fanatics. It's just, it comes with the territory. You know, yeah. you can you can do the same thing with Lakers fans, right? They're wearing the jerseys, they're buying the tickets, they got they got front row seats. They're trying to sit next to uh, Jack Nicholson courtside, right? Like there there are there are there is a dynamic around this, like you're saying, OG. To your point, there's a dynamic around fandoms where people will want to spend a lot of their money. Now, I think the question that we still have to answer by the end of this video is: At what point do they become fucking weird? <laughs> and, yeah, exactly. And I, here's the here's the thing that I feel about it too is I feel that you know there is there is a point at which you know in our in our court system in the United States um, one of the things that we talk about is we talk about what a reasonable person would assume right what is a reasonable yeah. person so it's sort of like one of those things where like what when does a reasonable person consider somebody fucking weird when they're at Disney yeah. no. and I think it's a good thing I think it's a good thing to kind of um, to kind of figure out and to kind of discuss and to kind of break it down because um, there's probably healthy things. And there's probably unhealthy things that people do with Disney, just like they probably do with Harry Potter, right? Like there's healthy or sports or anything things. or sports or anything else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Get uh, us down to the real psychosis. All, yes. <laughs> although some might assume Disney adults simply hoover up anything with a Mickey face on it. Fans are often Disney's harshest critics. Oh, here it comes. You can absolutely love something and still critically engage with it because you want it to be better, says Robin Meir, a sociology lecturer at Surrey oh. University in England. Oh. And Sounds so like Star Wars fans right now. Oh. <laughs> Wow, a sociology lecturer. Interesting. Here, here's where the criticism shows, shows up. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves is a film grown-up fans, fans can both cherish and acknowledge is problematic. Okay, so here's the thing with this with this little blurb right here. I think that honestly, I kind of agree. Disney fans are very critical of Disney. I see it all all the time on Twitter X. I mean, I see so much complaining on that app from diehard people that you, the, that everyone here would consider a Disney adult. All I do is see complaining. I don't know. What do you think, George? What, you're on Twitter. What do you think? <laughs> do you do you see everyone just kind of gobbling it up, or do you see a lot more complaining? Or what, what's your take on it? And no, I, I mean you, you touched upon it earlier. It's like <clears throat> where people can't make up their minds of really what is satisfying to them. Like you had mentioned, like if if tickets aren't too too high then the reservation system has got on their nerves or you you can't get a, a dining reservation or it's like oh it's too crowded in the park it's like no matter what you can never please anybody and i think that i think the the majority of the people who you know kind of um uh have these complaints and actually probably i don't even have to probably say this by the the end of the the video i think i i find my you know what what makes <laughs> <laughs> that i think i think for me is the constant complaining and then, i but think still, but then still going that's the that's the weird that's thing. it yes the constant complaining and still going to me it's just it's so hypocritical it's like you, you bitch you complain you moan you groan and then you're like Oh, look at me. I'm on Big Thunder Mountain. Woohoo. Best day ever. It's like, what the fuck? It's like, <laughs> it's like if you don't like it, that's fine. It, it, there's nothing wrong with not liking it. But don't say you can't stand this or you can't stand that. Where I can understand if it's like one or two things, but well, if, it's criticism. like if it's every single thing you have to criticize. But then in the next week, you're saying, okay, I'm going back to Disneyland or I'm going on a Disney cruise. It's like, why? <laughs> then it's like you're torturing yourself and well, then that's where it hinders me it's like then it's affecting me because it's like i have to listen and hear you bitch moan and complain 24 7 about everything and then you're gonna get on social media and post a video or post pictures it's like no <laughs> well yeah there's way. A lot, look healthy criticism is good right? exactly. and we do a lot on this channel yes absolutely yeah that's good yeah there's nothing wrong with that 
exactly. And I think what George is talking about are, are th there are fans out there, Disney fans that just that just everything they that Disney releases is just the worst thing ever. And honestly, probably for me, it's like one of the like like they post pictures. It's like oh, the light bulb is burnt out on Main Street, or it's like you go <laughs> over here and it's like oh, there's a little nick over here in the wall. It's like who gives a fucking shit? Like well, things wear in tear. It's it's called life. <laughs> well, that that's why I've been railing against this annual pass culture for a long time. I think it's unhealthy. Now, look, any I'm not saying people can't go when they want to go. I'm not I'm not saying that. You can go as many days of the week that you want to go. But I think when when you start to see people do that, I think that kind of is kind of is stemmed from boredom, right? Like if you like when I went to Walt Disney World for the first time back in July, I'm not I'm not I'm not keyed in and tapped into the light bulbs and the scratch on on the paint and this stuff and i'm i'm more focused on wow this is a new experience i'm overwhelmed by this new experience right same goes for disneyland a, a, a family from japan going to disneyland resort for the first time they're not sitting there nitpicking the paint and this bulb and that no it's the people that go four and five days a week that get bored and they have nothing to do they start to notice that stuff and i think that exactly. these parks were never designed for that kind of um uh, visitation I think they were always kind of like Walt. I think he wanted these as sort of like events in your life or like special treats. And I think when you go and you treat it like the mall, you get bored and you start to notice these things. And then they get on social media and they start complaining about it. And it kind of snowballs. This has been going on for years. And, 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 and honestly, to be fair to your point, OG, that's absolutely correct. Since I've gone to Walt Disney World many times, I can go on the monorail and say, you know what? They really need to update this, you know, the, 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 the smell, the look, the everything. It's like for me, it's like they need a big change where were you it's your first time on a Walt Disney World monorail. So you're like, oh, we're going from the Magic Kingdom over to the Polynesian over to right. Epcot. It's like y y you're mesmerized in it where it's like. For me, then it's like, okay, can we get this diaper smell out of here, please? Before I <laughs> <laughs> you what, know, what, yeah, no, 100%. 100%. What, what, what's your thoughts on that, uh, Jay? I have a totally different take on this, uh, uh -oh. actually. And, and, and I think I understand this from a different angle. And I have a funny story for you guys because our, our buddy, uh, Matthew Meyer, who's been on this uh, channel numerous times. Shout out to Matthew. What's up, Matthew? He and I were talking, and, um, and he's just for context for everybody, he's from the UK, okay? And I didn't think about that as I was giving this example. But I go, because he was kind of talking about that. He was kind of saying, like, do you think that Disney's just going down the tubes? Like, there's so much negativity out there. Like, what's going on? And I go, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you, Matthew. I think it's just a lot like the Yankees. I think that basically you get to the being the best and then people, they just want to go and attack the best. And he goes, and this is what's so funny. He goes, oh, okay, cool. So are, are the Yankees the people from like the West Coast? And I'm like, no, no, dude. It's a sports team. It's a sports team. called. It's not a group of people. It's a sports team. Uh, so shout out to Matthew. That was a funny conversation. Yeah. Was, he, I Matt, was thinking. I, I, have to, I have to say, Jay, with all your sports uh analogies where you're using yeah. the lakers the clippers now the yankees i think by the time this video ends og's gonna know every single sports team <laughs> from here to kingdom come right yeah. i know i had to, what i had to do for matthew is i had to actually do a do a football uh soccer um a soccer analogy since he since he's from the uk but what i was trying to explain is is this basic concept is that when something has become let, let, let's keep in mind millennials specifically said that disney was the most trusted brand that was not that long ago five six seven years ago that that the study came out that disney was the most trusted brand name out there that's but by the way that that has shifted it is no longer true i believe but if that's the case what have you done by achieving what you achieved you became the yankees what do people Think about the Yankees who are not Yankees fans. I, I fucking hate the Yankees. Now, what do people think about the Yankees who are Yankees fans? Oh, I can't believe they made that trade. I can't believe that guy's not hitting 500 this year. I can't believe that guy's not hitting home runs. This pitcher's a bum. His ERA is off the charts. That is the natural course of our, uh, our fandom. Our, the natural car course of our fandom is to when something is small, when something is when we're rooting for it, we 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 overlook some of the bad things about it. We go, hey, I want you to come to my thing because it's really cool, and I know it's not the best, but I'm the underdog. We root for underdogs. We try to 
take people down a peg when they're on top. And that's just to me what's going on with Disney. Disney has been on top. It's been on top for a long time. A lot of the people that hate on Disney like to talk about some of the underdogs. They start to talk about the second best uni. They like to talk about, you know, de- the regional park not. There's nothing wrong with those things. I think it's just fairly natural given where Disney is at. And if you're one of those people that has been kind of annoyed with some of the things that choices that Disney has made, if they start to slip a little, you kind of, you're kind of happy about it. Just like if the Yankees start to slip a little, all the other people who used to be fans or who aren't fans anymore are like, yeah, I'm pretty glad they're slipping. I told them that they were getting it wrong. Right. Right. Like that's just part of the natural human inclination to, to take people who are on top, and want to root for them to fail because they got out price. There's a lot of self-reflection that could be done, but let's face yeah. it. Who's good at self-reflection. I'd rather just yell at the mouse. So I think that that's kind of in my mind, it's just a natural human tendency to right. do that kind of thing. 100%. Well said, brother. Well, well said. Wow, no. we went really wow. deep there. No, really, really deep. There's nothing. There's no, no adult, no actual thinking adult looks at Snow White and says it's problematic. Okay, I, I agree 100%. No, that, with you, I, that I agree. That I agree. <laughs> I agree with that one. Some of the stuff is way out there. And yeah, for Snow, actually, Snow White is surprisingly not problematic for being a film that was released in the 1930s. It surprisingly doesn't have that. It's not problematic, and and it's okay. it's impressive how so not problematic it is. Here's 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 my thing with with um with WDW Pro's channel in general. A lot of the stuff I disagree on with them when it comes to the parks. Okay, majority some things I agree on. When it comes to the studio side of Disney, I have a higher percentage of agreeing with what they have to say because I see a lot of what they say of the truth of just what vr had mentioned right. with snow white where it's like they got rid of the the dwarves in in the <laughs> the newer live action snow white because actor uh peter dinklage had mentioned about you know of the, the um I, I forget the actual quote he used but I, it's like and then there was um an an actual dwarf actor that was on um uh, who who the hell was he on? It was on um, I I forget the station, but he actually condemned Peter Dinklage's statement on that because because he is a dwarf actor, right. it took a job away from him because he oh, said okay. that nobody else could actually fit in that role, and he said as a dwarf actor. It's never going to be where it's like he's going to be the main center focus character as like a Tom Cruise type of character from Mission Impossible. So he said, being that there are movies out there such as like, for instance, like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, possibly The Wizard of Oz, The Lord of the Rings. There's certain roles, Willow even with Warwick Davis, you know, there's certain roles that are created for the smaller type actors and he was actually saying that it was actually a pity that it, it they actually uh got rid of jobs for dwarf actors mm-hmm. and i'm quoting this act i forget the, the guy's name but that was his quote to um the station that he was talking to about them removing the seven dwarfs from the live action snow white fascinating fascinating let's continue <laughs> i'm sorry they don't <laughs> Maybe uh, maybe a sociology lecturer in yeah, London. That's the problem Feminist right there. there. Yeah, these are the same people. Let me let me just tell you about these people. <laughs> these are the same people who you know Disney puts out like twenty seven new cupcakes a month at their parks, right? These are the people, and and you know I, I'm not, listen, folks. If you're out there buying something that is Disney related, we're not mocking you. You're normal, okay? We are mocking the people who, when the 27 cupcakes come out, they go try every one of the 27 cupcakes and they post every single one of one of them to their Instagram Mm -hmm. and they give, they give a Yelp review uh, (laughs) on how, on, on the taste of the icing. And you're like, it's the same freaking icing. It's Uh. just different food color. You idiot. (laughs) Okay, this, this is kind of funny. This is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> so, 
okay so he said if you go to the park as a family you buy souvenirs you're normal okay that's fine i i would agree with that but if you go to the park i guess as an influencer or like a youtuber or content creator and you're buy or or even just a disney adult and you're buying all these cupcakes just to try them or whatever and posting it on your instagram okay you're you're you're, you're a weirdo okay well first of all <laughs> first of all I, I don't know. I know a lot of people in this space who actually do that. You know, I mean, there's there's uh, paging Mr. Morrow. There's the the trackers. Um, I think even uh, Jay, you know, Mr. Cheesy Pop, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I don't think any, does it too. Sometimes he'll do the churro right. challenge or whatever. Right, exactly. Yeah. You know, even so, Dave, even Dave from Fresh Baked. Has right, done right, hundred percent. So I don't think that's necessarily weird. It's just like you know, the, they make content and that's their corner of the market, and they do that stuff. Now, personally, I don't do that kind of content. I'm not into that, but there's a market for it. So I don't think it's necessarily weird. Um, even if you're a Disney adult and you want to try, you know, there's three cupcakes that come out and you want to try them all. That's like well, I'm actually guilty of that because, <laughs> well, Disney World, not with cupcakes. I'm, I'm telling you because I think after the fact of this video, I probably am never going to want to look at another damn cupcake again. That's <laughs> like, but uh, at the storybook treats in Fantasyland at Magic Kingdom, um, they released, which I, I'm kind of bummed because they didn't, they don't have them anymore. As far as I know, right. they each, each month they released a different flavor, soft serve ice cream. Speaking of which, uh, designed for each of the seven dwarfs. So mm -hmm. they had one for dopey, one for sneezy, one for, and I was in that cupcakes, dude. <laughs> there you go. So it's like, because I've seen that, not because I'm, I'm an influencer that I want to post it, but I want, I was curious to know what each ice cream represented for which dwarf, right. you know? So to me, it's like for anyone who would want to do that, yeah. you know, and take a picture of it and post it on their social media, you know, sometimes a lot of people need those influencers in the sense of where if they are a first time traveler or if right. they say, you know what, I want to get their opinion on it. Okay. Does this taste you know, good. Is this taste bad? Is this, you know, it's like, so there's, I don't see anything really wrong with that. Cause there are people who dedicate themselves to watching fresh baked. There are people <sighs> who dedicate themselves to watching the trackers. There right. are people who dedicate watching paging Mr. Morrow. I'm a huge fan of paging Mr. Morrow. I watch him religiously. I just think he's just a, a cool human being. He's a, he's a, a heart of gold type of thing yeah. and it, for anyone he actually just released a video that he's a, i think he flew a, a either a plane or a a copter over magic kingdom i don't know how this guy does it he's like all over the place so. well well it's interesting the only thing i, I <laughs> it is kind of funny though that pro says at the end of that then they post their review on yelp <laughs> no, who's ever who's i can't remember the last time i even went on Yelp. pro pro man i'm telling you right now they're not they're not getting on yelp but those are the soccer moms who who the who the where the cupcake was maybe uh <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't to their liking, and and the, and the you know they're a Karen, and they get on Yelp and they complain. What That's Yelp. <laughs> you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a slightly different tack here. I actually I actually tend to agree with WDW Pro here. Um, and let me wait tell you before what, before you move on. Is there yeah. in some point of this going to be a sports analogy? No, no sports <laughs> analogies. No sports analogies. I'm gonna keep it keep it. Well, I, I'll try to avoid sports the rest of the time. No, actually, um, I think that's kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but my the reason I I kind of agree is because um, I think that well, for two two things. One, when I agree with Pro, I agree that there is a category that is so so much of an outlier that it is weird right and this is what my you're getting a little bit of a flavor of what my disney adult thing is going to be at the end <laughs> but there is a category of people that i think are pretty weird now one of the things tom corliss just did a video um a couple weeks back maybe a week back and he and it was their second podcast i believe of their new podcast um, that they're doing and he was talking about disney influencers he was talking about how a lot of them don't get along apparently in uh in walt disney world he's talking a little bit about that He's calling calling a few people out. It's very very confrontational. You might want to check that out. See what Tom's views are. Um, but one of the things that he talked about was the proliferation of people. Tom's one of them, by the way, who built a business off of another business called Disney. 
And so the, their entire business exists because Disney exists. If Disney right. was to go out of business, they would be out of business as well. There's no, there's nothing there. There's a lot of businesses that, that fit into that category. And I do think that some of those businesses have become, again, Disney has become so popular that people do care. I want to know which cupcake I should get. I want right. to know. We're going to talk about, they're going to talk about this in a minute and we'll talk about it too. But I want to know which Instagram shot I should get with my cupcake, right? Because I got to get these views and the cupcakes are going to give me these views. So I, t I tend to agree with him because I think if you were to tell uh, a reasonable person that there is a business that exists that, one of the things that they do is they get a picture of every new food item that this other company releases because they want people to know what the latest, greatest stuff is. That's that seems fairly unreasonable. If you were to tell somebody in uh, in the middle of Africa right now, do you know that there's a business that exists and the business is entirely based off cupcakes, right? Like, like. That would be like, what are you even talking about? Like, I can't even imagine that that's a thing that exists. So I think that there's, we as fans do get to places that are a little bit ridiculous and we should be made fun of. Not mean-spirited, not putting yeah. people down and saying they're assholes or something, but just saying like, Oh, but that's the fun part of that it. We do this. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> no, I'm just, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but actually, wait, if I could actually push back on that a little bit, Jay, now I... I feel like that's what it was in the very beginning because during the time more so like when Justin Scard and the trackers kind of – they both kind of spearheaded mm. the vlogger community. Sure. So when you had just a small handful of vloggers that were showcasing, hey, the new cupcake, hey, the new boba drink or, or what have you – it really did. It made a major impact because there was only a small handful. Mm. Now that the vlogger community has expanded, then it's it becomes a, a little bit of a monotonous thing where everybody is going for that same thing. Mm. So I feel like it kind of it, it started with Disney, but I'm starting to see where the vloggers are kind of expanding out even beyond Disney, because taking yeah. like paging Mr. Morrow, he went to. Um, He's been out to California. You know, he's not a big Disneyland person, but he has been going because he's a, a Florida local. He uh, visited L.A. recently. Mm -hmm. um, who's a, uh, Jackie from Super Enthused. She recently went to Dollywood. So it's like they're um, – and also the Florida Keys. Mm -hmm. So I'm starting to see where the vloggers are kind of extending out of Disney because I feel like they're even getting the, 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 the brim of it to say, you know what – we keep on kind of repeating ourselves with the same material. It's a, it's a saturated market for sure. But it's also, I think some of this stuff is really outside of Disney's control. I think it's just yes. the culture we live in right now. Right. Like yeah. that, like you look at YouTube, there's a lot of weird stuff on you. ASMR is fucking weird. Okay. It is. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's fucking weird, but that's the thing on YouTube and, and this whole Instagram culture where it's like, where I, I watch it. <laughs> you watch it. ASMR, you watch ASMR? I do. I I, I watch. George is like, there's a new Disney cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> what, do guys, what do you guys think about this? <laughs> yeah, but there, there's a lot of weird stuff. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of weird shit out there right now, and it's just. I think that it's this culture we live in. This social media culture is kind of weird. You know, it, it, I think it's kind of. You know, look, I think it's kind of annoying sometimes too when, you know, you, you, if you sit with someone at the table, right, and. They're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to take a picture of the food. It's like, oh, God. And see, that's part of the Instagram culture that, that extends far beyond Disney. So there's a lot of weird stuff happening right now in our world in general. And I think that does kind of bleed in to fandoms. And I think you're seeing a little bit of that here. But uh, yeah, it's it's. Well, we're gonna good. have to do, we're gonna have to do a video on ASMR because I got a whole lot of <laughs> thoughts on that, especially the ASMR mukbangs. Like, I'm sorry, the the, the sound of people chewing, like that's like nails on a chalkboard for me. That's, that's like, fascinating. That's fascinating. Go ahead, Jay. Really, quick, really quickly, uh, before we move, <laughs> I actually agree with George on that. Um, I do think there's a difference. I found it very helpful as a, especially when I was a pass holder. When somebody like um, Jackie Super Enthused, right, would go to one of the festivals and try the different food items and tell me if they were any good or not, right? I think Mr. Cheesy Pop's pretty good at that, for example. I think that there is, I think that, like, I watched, I was in Walt Disney World 
And my wife and I were just walking around one of the resorts and I saw somebody from the Disney food blog and I saw their Instagram post later. And the guy was like doing all this like po posts around the now I'm not trying to call them out and say like they're awful or whatever, but but they literally are a blog and videos about Disney food like that is what their business is. So I think that there I think that there's no reason for me to say like that's a bad business. They're jerks for being that. They're going to waste cupcakes because they're going to throw them away, which I'm sure they do by the way. I'm just saying it, I think that we need to acknowledge that that's pretty weird, right? Like <laughs> th that's not normal. Like like my business is taking what do you do for a job, man? Oh, I uh, predominantly take pictures of cupcakes. I mean, that's wild to say. That's wild, you know? That's, that's all my point is. I, I think some of it can be really helpful, and then some of it is just so over the top that you're just like, oh you, my You God. know, if I owned a business and someone came with me to me with that specific sentence that you just said on their resume, I'm hiring them on the spot. Like, that's just, <laughs> I, I, you know, that's, that's who I we're talking like about here. Because and, I'm a Yelp reviewer, and please give me <laughs> service quickly. And they, and they also just throw away the cupcake in many times, as we've seen uh, – those people just toss them as soon as they get the nice picture because they got yes. trim for the gram. And just those go. cupcakes are like twenty dollars for. A... All right, I got I got to push back on a little bit with this one. <laughs> not twenty dollars. I'm gonna break down the cup. We're gonna break down cupcakes right now, Jay. So back <laughs> up. Up. We're breaking down cupcakes. <laughs> we've, we've turned into fucking weirdos. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm, a... <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm a fuck. I, I am a fuck. I am. I'm gonna be a fucking weirdo for a minute. <laughs> and you know what? Just to top it all off, make sure you showcase this in the thumbnail. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You do this in 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 uh, ASMR. <laughs> exactly. So so this is from the Disneyland app, right? These cupcakes are not twenty dollars for. I'm sorry, man. They're they're like six bucks, dude. <laughs> like like for real. But I do want to bring this up though, because there is look. I, I will criticize Disney when when it's when it's deserved. I'm gonna also have to stand up for them when, hey, you know what? Maybe not so deserved. And Disney gets a lot of shit for being like overpriced or like the most expensive out there for everything, you know? Not so much the case here. Now these are Disney's cupcakes, five ninety nine, right? Five ninety nine. Let's go to Universal Town real quick. <laughs> Let's travel to Universal Town. If you want to get a Dracula cupcake, <laughs> you're talking six ninety nine, okay? You're a doll, full dollar more. Now it doesn't stop there. <laughs> now we're getting in. AJ, we're getting. In oh my god! Way. I it, it just now hit me. Three adult men recording a video <laughs> talking about fucking prices of cupcakes. Yeah, we hit the new high, ladies and gentlemen. We're, 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 we're breaking it down. We're breaking it down, fellas. So the, the Dracula's cupcake is is actually more expensive than the Disney ones. But if you want, if you want to get, if you want to get that that sweet Super Nintendo cupcake, the Princess Peach cupcake, you're talking ten dollars for this cupcake. Ten dollars at Universal for this cupcake. Now, did he get a lot of shit as as the most expensive, the most expensive, the most expensive? Look, I mean, it's right here, black and white. I mean, you're paying for the Princess Peach cupcake. For that, for that delicious chocolate crown, you're paying double. <laughs> double. I don't even know what, a mis what is it, Mister Bean Pole cake? What is that? Oh, Bean Pole. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, it's Mount Bean Pole. You know that little thing that um, Mario jumps on and goes down. Uh, so anyway, sounds uh, sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah, it does. It sounds like an ASMR cupcake challenge to me. <laughs> Absolutely, but I, I just wanted to bring that up because. <laughs> and I and I don't know if Pro is being serious about the twenty dollars thing, but they are not twenty dollars. Um, and to be honest, <laughs> Universal's cupcakes are even more expensive. Uh, so that's your deep dive on cupcakes. Let's continue. <laughs> now that we're now that we're all fucking certified fucking weirdo. <laughs> 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 oh, I think it's on. Yeah, can, it on you, can you hear it, OG? Because we can't hear it. Oh, you can't hear it? Uh -uh. No. Oh, interesting. Okay, give me just a second. <laughs> OG's OG's acting like this is normal. I'm like, I can't hear anything. No, oh, there we go. Okay, I'll I'll go back a little bit. Cool. Colors for a stinky little cupcake that you could make at home for two bucks. Star Wars Galaxy's Edge got into this mix by doing the blue milk. And if you ever go into the restrooms, you'll see uh, in the sinks there, blue milk poured out by people who took it for the photo for Instagram. 
and then subsequently threw it away. I'm okay, this is <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, respectfully, Vash, he kind of makes it sound like well, go into the restroom. You'll 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 definitely see the blue milk in the sink. Check it out. That's from all the vloggers throwing it away. I, I I go a lot. I go like once or twice a month. I've never seen blue milk in the sink. Number one, <laughs> number two, they're in these like cheapy plastic cups, right? Like the cups that you would get like boba. Like if you, in LA, we have a lot of boba places, and they give you the, these plastic cups. People throw that shit away. Like you're not gonna walk past three trash cans to go into the bathroom to empty it out. You're just gonna throw it away. So well, I don't disagree with Vash. Maybe he did see right. that one time or something, but it doesn't right. happen all the time. Or if it really did happen, as I said, like maybe once or twice, we don't know the full story as why it was spilt out. You know, you can't necessarily say that if if something was spilt out in the sink that it was for after taking an Instagram post. You know, <laughs> right. someone could have had like a half an inch left in their cup. They had to <laughs> take a piss. You know, they dumped a little <laughs> bit out into the sink, threw the cup out and went to the bathroom, did their business, washed their hands and boom, out they go, you know? Well, so. well yeah, it's like seeing, it's like seeing a hat on the floor and then coming up with like this whole backstory, like as to why the hat's there. Like, yeah. you know, you don't really know, no. <laughs> you yeah. know, so that's all I'm saying. I mean, this wow. is wow. Really yeah. single. Oh yes. For $20, I want diabetes. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> It's not twenty dollars VR. <laughs> no, you'll get diarrhea. That's what you'll get for that twenty dollars. Because it, there's no natural. Sorry, substance. Wilford Brimley. There's no natural substances, whatever, in those things. They're they're somehow non dairy and uh, no sugar. And I man, I, I I have they even released what the ingredient list? It's is? like it's like the the chemical composite of coconut extract oh. infused with you know. Infused with Jedi powers. <laughs> it, it, the ingredient oh, list is quite long. Uh, it's, it's, they, they wanted to do something that was milk-like, but didn't actually have dairy in it, so they, they went and did this well, huge... You, you know, know, the, you know the funny story about that, don't you, Vash? You know why they did that. Well, they, got a big, yeah. they got a big award from PETA for doing that. And oh, so the whole really? thing was... Okay, so PETA waged war against uh, SeaWorld, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, Disney's sitting there with Animal Kingdom. They don't want to. They don't want to wage war with PETA. So how do they get PETA off of them? Dairy-free blue milk and green milk, and then oh. some other vegan options that they've done around the park to garner praise from from PETA. Even though they, they still do. get to have their elephant. Well, it's interesting with, with the blue milk and the green milk. Jay, have you have you had these yet at the parks? Yeah. yeah. Do they taste like milk to you? To me, they taste like slushies. You know what? I'm not a fan of them at all. Like, like, like to be honest with you, like I'm actually, if it was whole milk with blue coloring, I that that would be awesome i would like that <laughs> um so... see now see if it was that then to pro's point that would give me diarrhea <laughs> <laughs> no it's, it, i don't i don't think they taste very good what do, what do you guys think you guys like them the, the blue one isn't too bad it's just like a tropical yeah. like slushy thing the, the green, green one, one was kind of funky to me yeah Which green, like i i, I could do or i could I could do or do without it like it's not something that i would make my way like if it's like uh, why not? I'll just grab one. It kind of has like a, like like a milk of magnesia type of like uh, like if, if I'm drinking like Pepto Bismol, it has like that consistency a little bit, tied with it being a slushy, but it doesn't have like a like a like a milky milkshake type of taste. It's, the pro- it, it, it's weird. It's weird. The problem with 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 actually even creating blue milk to actually consume is that in the theme park environment, you're talking the Southern California heat or even worse, the Florida heat yeah. and, and you, and you're marketing something as milk. It doesn't sound that good in the heat. It sounds kind of gross. So people see that and go, Oh God, I don't want milk. And even though it's not really milk, it, it's much more like an icy or slushy. It's still fucking weird. Um, and that's why universal took it away with the Harry Potter. Cause when you say butter beer, it's like, Oh, you know, um, you know, snow, wind, rain, <laughs> sun, well, you know, give me a beer. <laughs> well, and hey, look, you guys know me. I'm a big I'm a big Disney guy. The butter beer is a thousand times better than the blue milk. A thousand times better. Mm. I love butter. Beer. <laughs> it's fantastic. Bunsen, then their cake can eat it, too, even why though they're serving fantastic steaks over at La Cellier. Yeah, I just why do Feels they continuously want to appease all of the wackos and the wrong people that don't pay their bills? It never but see, here's the thing that. <laughs> We're, we're talking about people that are buying cupcakes to throw them away. VR, they are spending the money. <laughs> they are, it doesn't matter what these people do with the cupcakes afterwards. They, if they bought four cupcakes, that's all Disney cares about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, at the end of the day. Really, yeah. mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
never ceases to amaze me. And because they buy thirty cupcakes a trip, apparently. There you go. See, bro. It's absolutely bizarre. I was just about to bring up that point here, where you do have somebody, I guess, from the UK uh, contributing to this article uh, here, which is interesting to talk about because when let's say when Universal opened up their Wizarding World back in 2010, uh, when that initially opened, first of all, they paid off the whole thing just to butterbeer butter sales alone. So it speaks to, you know, if you put out a good product that people actually want to buy, they'll support it. it. it also, it, too, the... How about that? It tastes good. It tastes yeah. good, right? Yes. Uh, but the, the merch was good, and, and they appealed to an audience that, you know, a multi-generational audience to the point where UK families, when they would actually come down and visit the Wizarding World, they'd be leaving a at the very minimum with at least a thousand dollars worth of merchandise each time they would actually go in there. Um, and that was back in 2010. And that's when the mouse house was like, Oh, okay. So we actually had to, we had to uh, appeal to uh, an audience ourselves and they completely screw that up. And now they're really kind of leading into these D Disney adults to be our a point, you know, have very, very little, uh, let's, let's say revenue generation potential. Yeah. This is the same model that they use in mobile gaming, right? These are the whales. And so what Disney is doing is they are creating these items that do right. not appeal to average people, but they appeal to a very particular customer in, and that particular customer buys it in mass. And oftentimes that customer does not have the funds to afford such a thing, but that never stops them. They can, buy it anyway and they live. Okay. So what pro is saying is it's, <clears throat> geared towards a specific audience which he was referring to i'm sorry is the vloggers because they're the ones that would buy such thing to take pictures or video put on their social media right. but then at the same time he's saying that they can't afford it well right. in my opinion as far as i know if the vloggers are going to buy it <laughs> you know i seriously doubt that they wouldn't buy it if they couldn't afford it you know so it's plus in in my opinion, I don't see vloggers buying two dozen worth of cupcakes. As far as I know, I've never seen like they may buy one or they may a lot of times, believe it or not, I think vloggers live it on the cheap side because I see a lot of them kind of sharing it with their friends or other vloggers when they're doing videos together, yeah. you know, so it's not like that they're buying, you know, two dozen cupcakes or what have you it's i only see them buy one maybe if two or maybe of different ones they do their video and that's that well, so of what pro is saying i'm at least what i'm hearing is he's saying it's it's speaking to a specific demographic but yet they can't afford it but as i said to a normie a normie isn't going to go and buy even a, a dozen worth of cupcakes right well and i don't really know yeah, I'm a little confused by that because I don't I'm know assuming that's who, who he's referring to, right? He's referring to the vloggers. I guess so, yeah, or just Disney adults in general. But like, how do you know they can't afford it? My my bigger question is like, if if I mean, you're right. That's George, that's what I'm saying. So if they want to buy it, obviously they can they have the it. means to do so. Yeah. Yeah. What What are your thoughts on that, uh, Jay? Yeah, I mean, like, look, let's let's face it. There are. There's several categories again, right? And and some of these categories are more disturbing than others. If <laughs> let, let, let's face it, like Tim Tracker has worked into his budget that he is going to pay for certain things because he knows that those things will get him views, right? Right. Like it's it's um it's it's not that different than than us. Like you guys, uh, I sent you guys the the PC Dev video and said you guys should react to this. It's not that different because you guys know that. He has he expresses an opinion, and that you guys can express another opinion. It's what we're doing with these guys right now. It's there is there is a there is a discussion to be had that is part of the business model because we are commentators on <laughs> Disney stuff. So right. I think to a certain extent, but where it gets weird is where it gets into the people who are kind of wannabe influencers who really can't afford stuff, but they're trying to do it for clout. It gets weird when there's people that dream in their heads that they want to be a vlogger, but they really have no shot at doing it because they don't have the personality or they don't have um, the means by which to do it. <clears throat> it, it th that's where it gets kind of, again, kind of weird to me where it's like, oh man, we've started to, uh, I'll use the word idolize because we're going to talk about um, they just kind of offhand mentioned this, but I've talked to Josh 
from Modern Mouse all the time about this is like some people do treat Disney as as a religion. And that makes me uncomfortable, right? So now you're hearing a little bit more about where I'm going to put the fucking weird <laughs> line. Um, and and I, I think that just because it makes me uncomfortable doesn't necessarily mean someone's doing it, doing the wrong thing, right? I'm uncomfortable with a lot of things. Um, but it just makes you feel like, oh, man, I hope that that person isn't dedicating their lives to something that's not going to be something that they're going to be able to attain. Right. Um, that would be sad to me. I would be I would feel sad if that were the case. So I think it's again, it's this weird gray area where like it's weird for some people, but maybe some people it feels like it's kind of normal because it's kind of their shtick, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, hard. it's a hard one. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's all very subjective. Either working, you know, they are the Instagram generation. They go online and they present themselves as being luxurious Disney resort guests. And in, in reality, they're going into debt to buy these Chinese sweatshop yeah. trinkets. It's it's ludicrous. It's just ludicrous. And it, it doesn't leave these people happy. And uh, I, I would point out that however many people, if we can track how many people actually went into the Galactic Star Cruiser, they probably have a pretty good idea of what population of the United States is actually these uh, Disney adults with the large pockets that will go and do something just to put it on Instagram. Well, not not even with the large pockets. I agree with what Pro said. You've got a lot yep. of people out there that, I mean, I I personally know people, um, teachers and and people like that that, and I'm not trying to disparage their their fandom in any way, but I know some of these folks that, you know, they make decent incomes. They're not destitute. They're not poor. You know, but they're not wealthy either. And I mean, they they will spend, you know, a year, two years more sometimes setting aside thousands of dollars in savings to go to disney yep. because that's yeah. their thing and it's see but i i see but see i kind of see that as like the, that? well yeah because i see that as being responsible you're setting aside money <laughs> to, so you can afford it so it, they're not they're not just putting it on the credit card maxing out they're doing the right thing right i don't know i mean should, like don't you me. wouldn't you wouldn't you save for anything if you're planning a wedding Aren't you going to take the time to put money aside and save it that you can say, OK, right. you spent over 20, a lot of how, how weddings. I mean, a lot of people go between 50 to 70 thousand dollars, you know, for a wedding. And then five years later, you end up with a divorce. So it's like 70 thousand dollars, <laughs> you know, you're in, in the hole. But yet at that time, if you want to do that and you want to save that money and then you, you have money for a honeymoon, say you go to Hawaii, you put money aside for that. So it's like you you can't just title that strictly on Disney's behalf to say, cool. okay, for these people to say, okay, well, I'm going to take a whole year and save several thousand dollars to take this trip when you could practically do, say that about anything. Well, and I think it all comes down to what you're personally into. I don't think I don't I don't really and I could be wrong, I mean, but I, I don't take VR as a guy that's like at the Disney parks all the time. Right. It's probably not like really his thing. I don't really you know? take him as a person that they're at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so he sees his friends or colleagues taking a year, two years to save up for a Disney trip. And he sees, he kind of sees that as weird. Cause like, why would you do it for that? You know, I would right. feel the same way about maybe like a sports thing, right? I'm not into sports, you know? And like, right. if I heard someone save a year, a, a whole year to save up for some sports, I'd be like, Oh my God, it's not worth it. So it kind of depends on like what you're into. I don't think he's really into it. So when he hears right. someone saved up a whole year for it, he's like, why? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, um, man, if you're spending that much time to go on this and you're doing this every couple of years, it's like, you know, that financial planner brain and me goes off and I'm thinking to myself, you might want to dedicate that elsewhere. If, if right. it's taken that long, to well, get, you know, okay. and I, yeah. it's, it's just, but that's the mentality. And this is who Disney is going after. I mean, I, I'm not trying to go off the rails with this, but I mean, people make jokes and people make comments and remarks about big pharma or big car, or big this or big that. And people don't think about well, big Disney big kind Disney. of does the same thing to people too. They do. Um, Jay, your thoughts on big pharma, big Disney. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, I message, I message uh, OG about this earlier. I think, um, I think a couple, a couple things. First of all, I think that people do, responsibly and irresponsibly spend money on things that they shouldn't 
right? right. Spent, people for sure irresponsibly send, spend money on Disney. For sure, people irresponsibly spend money on guns. I know people with gun collections, there's like way more than Disney would cost, right? Um, so when you get into big pharma, you know, big gun, whatever, big, big, uh, big NRA, if you get into any of this kind of stuff, I think the bigger question is a lot of times we will call things big this or big that because the thought process is there is something going on where they have backdoor uh, connections to government. They're getting government benefits in some way. Um, they're working around regulations in some way, shape or form. And to me, Disney is more, it, you know, I don't see that. Now, if we're on a show with these guys and we're having a conversation, they could be like, well, what about Reedy Creek, bro? And then maybe, maybe that's a thing, right? But to me, I don't see Disney as, in this case, Big Pharma is you have a disease, you have a problem, we're going to treat you. And in order to get access to that, the doctor has to agree to give it to you. We're going to put pressure on the doctors. There's lots of information about this. You can go research it, how Big Pharma works. They put pressure on doctors. They put pressure on, you know, there's only two countries in the entire world that allow advertising for drugs. Um, and it's New Zealand and the United States. <laughs> so, so that feels like it's something you need to access. Um, but you, there's barriers to it. There's some people get it. Some people don't. There's trials that run that they approve the trials. Those are big, complex, like, like working through the government, working through insurance systems. A lot of that, uh, there's a lot of corruption that can work itself in. Is Disney this giant corrupt organization that's like working around regulations to kind of feed you another cupcake? Like, I don't think so. I think you decided when you showed up, do I want a cupcake or do I not want a cupcake? Right. right. So I think the comparison is not, I understand what he's saying, but I don't think, I think that Disney is too capitalist of an organization at this point, comparative to those organizations, which are heavily tied to regulators and heavily tied to government entities. So to yeah. me, I don't see the connection of like a big Disney. I think you'd have to prove that like Disney was somehow uh, manipulating people into buying something. To me, it's like, did you want to pay for the cupcake or not? You just, you made your own choice there. hundred yeah. percent. I mean, they 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 will they will they will they base that marketing uh design off of we're gonna get you to 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 bring money i mean remember like the first couple but but that's every business though <laughs> like we're gonna get you to bring money that's what every freaking business does yeah. and, and like look you know you could say like oh well they're they're manipulating people because of like the nostalgia factor and this that and the other but every company does if look at look at the car commercials on tv Right when they tell you, don't you want to be cool? And you got to buy this new BMW. That's manipulation to some degree to try to get you to, to try to get you buy that car. Right? Disney does the same thing. Hey, you know, don't you want to remember the magic? You got to come back to Disney parks. It's a marketing thing that er literally every corporation on the planet, any business does. And I feel like, with all due respect, I think these gentlemen sort of paint it as some sort of evil thing or this sinister little plot. It's just business, baby. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, <laughs> it's capitalism. It's capitalism. It's capitalism. Right. Exactly. A couple of seasons of Family Guy, like back in the early 2000s, and this was when Eisner was still CEO. There was a there was a joke in a Family Guy episode. Pretty sure it was Family Guy, and you know one of the characters was in the parks, and Eisner Eisner drives up in a car or something, and just looks at him and goes, "Bring money." Hey, you know what, George? You know what happened, right? Uh, yep. Uh -oh. you know, exactly you, what you, happened. You, you, you gotta you have know, a drop. You gotta have a money drop. Yeah. VR, <laughs> you mentioned money. Here we go. Give me the drop. Some money. Drop on all my money. Drop. Brand new money. Brand new hundreds. Got a bunch of zeros. I could bag a new funnies. Sorry. When, when you say money on this show, we gotta drop the La Lisa and the little Wheezy on you. <laughs> it's, like, like, it's one of those true jokes on Family Guy ever. It would put that, and again, that was with Eisner. I mean, that's how far back that right. episode was. Right, and they've only gone farther and farther down that path. <laughs> the yeah, shopping I... centers have only gotten even more elaborate. I mean, Disney Springs used to be a place that you could take a family and get some merch. Now it's all like shops that I would never go into that shop in the, under a normal uh, circumstance. Right, it's Louis Vuitton. It's... But, but I haven't here's been the there crazy since thing. it was downtown Disney. So like when y'all say Disney Springs, y'all throw me off. I got to ask, wait, what is that again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, He's so here, here's the crazy thing. The average guest and their average family they're already maxed out right and, and they're conscientious and so they go in there already maxed out trying to give their kids that once in a decade experience 
Sure. And they buy a normal set of souvenirs. And they're like, it's our vacation. We're going to splurge, you know. So they get the, the Disney mug and they get the ears for their child and the balloon. And that's normal. That's not that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a particular type of adult, oftentimes married adults, but often also not having children, who these individuals are going to Disney and Disney is marketing to them what I would describe as a religious experience. And right. they actually are participating in the Disney parks as if it is some sort of uh, sacred kind of, of experience. But this is where I kind of have to push back on pro a little bit respectfully. Is Disney marketing it as a religious experience or are fans create making a religious experience out of it? I don't I I can't point to any marketing material from Disney to 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 encourage people to take their company as a religious experience. I, I don't know. I, I I mean I guess that's subjective, but what what do you think, uh, George? Do you, do you feel like it's Disney kind of marketing this as like a religious thing for fans, or are fans just taking it upon themselves to make it religious? Because they're well, I mean, I mean, I mean, look at VR. He's even shocked that Pro said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, no, I I personally feel like that it was never Disney's intention to label it as oh it's it's a religious experience it's like all these tricks of the trade is like the disney man-made bible or sort of speak i think (laughs) that was just something that was created for the fans by the fans you know and i think disney just utilized that that it's like hey if you are willing to come to our park our business and you want to put out that amount of money for that We'll let you then then go for it. It's sure. like they're they're like when they sold the, the figment popcorn buckets at uh, Epcot, Disney didn't say, OK, we want X amount of people to be in this line. We better have this amount of people standing in line for over five hours for a damn popcorn bucket. No, the fans just came when Disney said, hey, we're releasing a figment bucket. You have to think, too, figment was popular in the sense where us Disney fans knew who he was, but even Disney didn't have the anticipation of how big Figment was going to come make a comeback in a big way. He c- became a major comeback by the the audience response to the popcorn buckets, to the uh, the Figment magnets, to the Figment spirit jerseys or what have you. So it's like then Disney's like, you know what? If the fans want it, let's make it. Let's right. give it to them. Yeah. So it's like whatever is is working its way through the generation gap or whatever is the fad disney's gonna market it It, it's it's no ifs ands buts about it and it's not just disney any smart business would do that i work in sales and marketing that's what hallmark does (laughs) right yeah they're gonna they're gonna try to sell you stuff that they think that that they think was gonna sell good i mean that's the point of of making money what now jay i know you have a lot of thoughts you mentioned it earlier on the show about disney as a religion now yeah. we're touching upon that with this. Do you think that that is something that Disney has sort of cultivated, or do you feel like this is something more the fans have kind of taken upon themselves to to make this kind of like religious experience? Yeah. So I think it's really good that Pro brings this up because I do believe that look, it's it's not like we haven't brought it up before either, right? Like Alia, our good friend Alia, who's been on the show numerous times, has right. called Disney the emotional support animal for a lot of sure. people, right? And the reality is that I don't think you can put it on Disney and say Disney did something completely wrong. But I do think what you can do is you can say Disney has optimized the ability for people to get a feeling based on a monetary expense, right? I pay I, I pay for something, I Instagram it, I get likes, I feel good, I get a dopamine hit. And so it's so could you argue that that's like, um, you know, it's like kind of selling a drug or something? Maybe. But but again, this is not like a this is not like a regulated substance. Happiness isn't a regulated substance. You know, um, I do, though, think that the the analogy to to it becoming a religion for some people is a really good one. We do know that the millennial generation is the most irreligious de- generation to date. Uh, if you look at boomers or you look at the greatest generation, almost everybody would identify with some religion. And we're not picking religions here. Any religion that they would pick, they would say. And I'm referring predominantly to America. If you look at 
every generation since the number gets smaller, right? So like I think it's like ninety three percent or something like that of the greatest generation identified with some sort of religion. But wow. as that track as that number tracks down, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So that millennials, I think the number is in the 70 percentile range. So you're talking about a 20 percent drop at least, if not over. I think one of the figures is like 26 percent drop in people having a religion to people not having a religion. Well, what do people what do people who don't have a religion occasionally replace a religion with? I think you can make an argument that Disney is there. Right. And Disney delivers an experience that is often like a religious experience for fans. I really love this thing. I feel loved by this thing. I can go get a hug from Mickey. I feel good about that. So I do think it's a good point to bring up. Do you hold Disney accountable for it and say like, oh, stop delivering such great experiences? I mean, I don't think you can, right? So I think it's a, it's, I think it's a, th- a thing to call out societally and say right. in this society, this is an interesting thing to replace religion with. Um, I mean, a lot of the people that I, I don't want to get um, overly um, I don't want to point the finger finger in a way that's not fair. But a lot of the people who would actually tell you that they really despise religion would go on to treat Disney as a religion. So it's a weird it's a weird societal construct that I think exists. Yeah. Um, but I think it does exist. And I don't think you can say Disney is a, it, you'd have to equate Disney to make this argument strong, you would have to equate Disney with a with a drug dealer, and say these people cannot control themselves, but Disney's still there to give them the thing when they ask right. for it. And I I think that's a pretty ho- difficult argument to make. So I would not make that argument myself. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like blaming the music, like let's say Drake or like Jay Z or whatever, right? Yeah. Or Taylor Swift. That's more on brand right now. Taylor Swift. Taylor <laughs> Swift. Um, she's huge right now. It's like blaming her because she's got pockets of fans that are like obsessed with her. It's like, well, if right. Taylor Swift wasn't so damn good, these fans wouldn't be as obsessed or whatever. She's she's cultivating this obsessive behavior. She's really not. She's just being Taylor Swift, making a bazillion dollars and, and being, a, being a phenomenal performer. Yeah. It's up to the fans to sort of determine their reaction to her you know and i think that's kind of the same thing with disney here but um before i i press play i do want to say in, in a walt holy name amen <laughs> <laughs> walt never intended for that and so but what, what's happening is they're taking all of these these slogans of the magic and and the pixie dust and uh you know they take all of that and they actually turn this into a part of their persona right and so like when you're talking about that individual who's now dressing head to toe. In, sorry, Bash. <laughs> <That's bad. laughs> but, the per, but the person who's dressing to head, head to toe and buying all the stuff in the parks, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delineate a little bit for you, Vash. Because here's the deal. I've got stuff on my in my studio walls that I can look around right now and, you know, plenty of, of uh, uh, movie posters and all kinds of things. Yeah. The difference is that for me and my sanity, I bought these at like, Hobby Lobby or Amazon or eBay for a normal price. These people are going to the Disney parks where the profit margins are raised to insanity levels. Like you're talking about items that are quadruple and uh, I don't know. What, what do you call the fifth level? Singtupled? I don't know. Quintupled. Uh, quintupled. Can you pause that for a second? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, first off, I do a lot of sh- – well, I don't do a lot of shopping, but I do buy some uh, – apparel merch at disney and i have seen disney merch on ebay i'm sorry (laughs) i think it's flipped (laughs) i think it's more expensive to buy disney stuff on ebay than it is in the parks you have people that are trying they go to the parks and they they buy a bunch of these and then they create a, a supply problem so that people are forced to go on the resellers. We we all complain about these all the time. The re, the eBay resellers, they get, then they go on eBay, they put that item up for sale for like double, triple, whatever, quadruple the amount that it would cost in the parks. And so, I and I brought that up too because again, as Jay, as Jay had mentioned, I'm kind of 
throwing into of like the the, the, the fucking asshole type of thing here is like <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, oh you mean the fucking weird uh, thing? The, the, the fucking weirdo oh, well, assholes yeah whatever you want to call them <laughs> yeah well look look i just i showed the graphic of the cupcake prices you know Be, speaking of fucking weird right i showed the graphic <laughs> of the cupcake prices i mean are those cupcake prices really that egregious you know i mean you go to like the world of disney store and you buy a t-shirt it's gonna run you 25 30 bucks yeah. I can go to my local mall and the, the novelty shirts are about the same price. I mean, look, there are things that Disney does that they overcharge you, right? I think I think the the, the magic key prices are out of control. Like the top tier is like fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, that's significant. That's significant, you know. But some of the other stuff, like when you buy like food and merch and things like that, it's it's more reasonable than people think it is, in my opinion. But just a, a couple points there, because sure, I've sure. got a bunch of Disney stuff back here on the wall, and, and you know, uh, like obviously before it was Disney, I got I've got Stranger Things too, and all kinds of stuff. I think it depends on what argument we're trying to make here. I think that there's a good argument to be made that people have replaced religion with Disney, and it's probably not good for them because disney is not set up to be he says it walt never intended for that to be a thing right right um again is disney at fault for that not necessarily but if, we're, if that's the argument then i think having the thing on your wall and like acting like it's something that you worship which some of these people did sound like in the article they were moving towards that kind of worship of this thing right right you, everyone can have their own definition of what worship means but it does seem like that would be it would be awkward right um it would be probably not good for their mental uh, health physical health spiritual health for them to worship something on their wall that they go oh, i can't believe i bought this. this is my favorite thing um i think though that that is a very different argument than how much disney costs those are two separate arguments right one is are you treating the thing like it's a religious experience the other is how much does it cost i don't think that those are the same arguments you could treat something as a religious thing that costs you nothing to get that maybe right. somebody handed you an item and maybe they did a magical experience and they gave you something a disney employee gave you something of theirs and you're like this is amazing i'm gonna put it on my wall i'm gonna treat it like it's a, a, a religious relic that is a different thing than if you spent money to get that, right? Like it's it's still a problem, but right. it's, it's a different. Well, I think and, you're just mixing some arguments here. You're right, Jay. And to your point, there there are people like, like and this is fucking weird. There are people <laughs> that would take the pirate water from the attraction and take it home with them. Yeah. Now that's free. That's zero dollars to do that, and that's fucking weird. And that 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 <laughs> that elevates you to that kind of like treating Disney like a religion, well, like this is yeah. holy water, basically. Well, what's right? even fucking even weirder is they take it and they drink it. Oh <sighs> yeah, because it's like they drink the pirate water, they drink the splash mountain water because it's almost like they had to feel like it's running through their veins. Like, oh, uh, it's like, it's, it's like, I have it in my system now. It's like, yeah. Uh, on top of sepsis, you know, it's, yeah, like, that, it's, like, it's like, geez. That, okay. I, I think I, I think I met, I reached my threshold as to what makes someone a fucking weirdo. And, that's <laughs> it, that's it. Yeah. and don't do that at home. If you guys are at Disney yes. parks, do not drink the water. That's yes. fucking disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> weird. I'll go to six times. It's oh, sorry. Sorry. One more thing. Septuple one more thing. Sorry. Above. And whatever you do, if you're at Walt Disney World and you're riding, and I'm serious about this, do not jump. Uh, if you're riding, uh, living with the land, do not jump out of the boat to grab a fucking cucumber. <laughs> no, do, not. Do, do not. Do not. And that has happened before. That's why George yes. is saying that. Uh, you that, would know, be, what, that would actually that would be, be seven. seven times, that would be yeah. seven septupled. Deck, deck <laughs> coupled. That means ten, folks. It's not a naughty word. Deck coupled. <laughs> Jonas is like, all right, when pro's done. He's out. He's, he's out of the stream now. Too late to grow. <laughs> well, six would like, even worse because that's sex. Yeah, coupled. that's coupled. I tried to avoid <laughs> that. Gosh, Valiant. <laughs> ah, but anyway, so uh, but, of but they are exorbitantly priced, and these people go into the parks and they spend the crazy money on the items that they could they could literally go to the cast member exchange and get them for 25 20 percent of what they're paying. Oh yeah, we saw 120 dollars lightsabers for 40 bucks uh, because of Lorena's coverage. Uh, amazing. Um, absolutely amazing because it, it is, in the end, a useless piece of plastic. And <laughs> if your identity is tied to a corporation, uh, to put it bluntly, you're going to have a bad time. But here's the thing, respectfully, Jonas, everybody on this panel, on this side, and everyone on his panel, to some degree, our identities are connected to this company. We all make really regular content about the Walt Disney Company. So doesn't that positive essence, or negative, well, positive, negative, neutral, indifferent, whatever. We all basically report on this stuff pretty nonstop. 
So our identities are tied to this as well, to some degree, right? And that's why I think that's kind of the theme of this of this whole show is actually there's different levels and different tiers of this stuff. But I mean, we're not too much different. The same. <laughs> yeah, but I do. I do think that there is something. There is something to say about when your identity is rooted in something that can be taken from you, should your identity be rooted in that? Right. So as I think it's a good question to ask yourself, because I think what Jonas is saying, I think that, so for example, he's going to, he's probably coming from a more specific perspective. Right. Um, and I probably have a little bit of understanding of like why he's saying what he's saying, but I think there is something to be said for, as human beings, and this is way deeper than a Disney podcast, but I think it's worth putting out there. Because yeah. if you ask yourself, what is my identity? What is my identity tied to? What could I lose? And would that take away my identity, right? Um, I think it's, that's worthy of thinking about. I think what you're saying, OG, is you're saying, well, it's a it's a portion of the identity. There's a there's a pie of identity. And there's 100% of the pie and then like 5% of it's Disney. Like I kind of right. just like being a Disney person. I think that the question is like, at what point in time does that portion of the pie become so important to your identity that if it were taken away, you couldn't get your annual pass anymore because it's too expensive for you. You couldn't ha afford Disney Plus anymore. At what point would you become devastated to the point where it's like, okay, that was probably an unhealthy level of attachment to something that you should not have been attached to. So I kind of agree with him there. Just just to put, throw that out. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. I remember during the pan. I remember during the pandemic, like out here in California, you know, Disneyland was shut down for like four hundred mm -hmm. and some odd days. Of, I think Vash knows actually the exact. I don't know the exact dates, but it was four hundred. Four hundred twelve. Four hundred. There you go. Oh, George, you got it. 412, 412. So we were shut down for a long time here, right? And I saw a lot of people on like social media that were like, oh my God, I'm like fiending to go back to the parks. I'm like, honestly, I'm not. I mean, I love Disneyland. I love going. I enjoy it a lot. But I kind of enjoyed a little bit of a break from it. You know, it kind of lets you, it kind of lets you reset a little bit, you know? Yeah. But we saw that obsession firsthand on Twitter during the pandy yep. where people were like climbing the walls, man. It was like, come on, you guys, you've been to this place a thousand times. You can't go a year or two without it. That This is weird. Yeah. Fun fact, my wife and I would go to downtown uh, Disney and get um, salt and straw ice cream and eat it on a bench and <laughs> lower our mask down and eat it on a bench. <laughs> nice. nice. That place is fantastic, by the way. I know. You have no control over that corporation. I, I'll, I'll say from my perspective, when my family, when we decided that we were going to spend as little money as possible on Disney, I'm not saying we've had a successful boycott because they own everything. Um it, it, it got us to be a lot more creative about where we were going to go with our vacations. Uh, all of a sudden it was like, well, what if we just go to this nice place instead of spending all of our money at the Walt Disney World Resort? Uh, and, and again, we were pretty frugal as far as that goes. What sure. if we go to a nice beach? What if we go to Gatlinburg? Hey, we went to Dollywood. That was a good time. Um, there are, and I'm, I'm, I'm barely scratching the surface of good vacations in the United States. Guess what? Uh, there's lots of coverage on that park place of wonderful national parks full of natural beauty that that Walt's designers could never replicate. <laughs> it's this it's this exploitative conduct uh, that uh, Pro was talking about before, where they they you know almost exclusively marketed towards these Disney adults that, as VR had mentioned, that that really kind of put themselves into incredible debt. And who have not only, you know, made self sacrifices to themselves in order to accomplish these Disney goals, but I've, I've seen people put their families through it. I've seen people kind of destroy themselves uh, in order to, to try to attain this kind of magic, this, this, this fantasy. Yes. And okay. it's just, it's, can, it's real bad. I mean, no, no, real quick. I know, George, you have, you have some, I'm going to let you, yes. I'm going to let you go on in just a moment. I just want to say one thing. He, he's just, he gets into this thing where people are, are going into debt and they're spending a lot of money. Again, that's not on Disney. Disney is not here to walk you through your financials. <laughs> and that's not their job. Disney is here to make money. So if they, if they put a product out there in the marketplace and people are buying it, that, that's where it starts and stops with the mouse. That's mm -hmm. it. It's not Disney's responsibility to go, uh, Brian, are you sure you can afford that Disneyland resort <laughs> vacation trip? Because we don't want to exploit you. You know, it's not their job. It's just not. Go ahead, George. No, no, no problem. And it's it's very true. Um, to 
Vash's statement, I actually want to touch upon that a little bit because I'm going to use myself as um, as an example because I actually can relate to that to that statement um, where, you know, about going where he mentions about going in debt and, you know, putting your families through it. They, they destroy themselves, what have you. Uh, I'm going to use my uh, situation at the time when I was uh, booking our uh, big uh, trip that was supposed to be for my 10 year wedding anniversary, which ended up changing significantly because one of my life's obstacles that was going through that time was a divorce, you know, and I've, I've been very vocal about that. I've been very open to the public on social media about my divorce and what have you. And this was going on dur like midway through of all the planning, all the booking. And then I had a rearrange and change stuff and then um, more financial you know burden came with uh, my tax return having some issues with that and what have you and the reason why I bring up my own personal stuff is because it's not it just doesn't end with me it ends with everybody else's you know financial burdens or what happens life happens we, you know each day is never granted to us of what's going to go on as each day goes on something can happen something can change and sometimes you just have to kind of roll with the dice and make the best of it and for me i wasn't willing to want to give up that trip you know i went through hell in a handbasket to put that trip together for you guys and i wanted to give you guys the ultimate walt disney world uh vacation because og you were never there Vash was there uh, the, the, the 2000, 2001, I think, somewhere around there. So I wanted to give you guys a different perspective of how I did Disney. You know, so that was something I really wanted to do with you guys. So I am a very tenacious person. I when When I see a challenge, I don't run from it. I run towards it. So in the words of Flight of Passage, Sivako, you know, <laughs> rise to the challenge. That's me. That that's that's like my slogan. So it it may burden other people, but again, I'm just speaking upon myself. It's not the necessary of it being Disney's fault, as you had mentioned, OG. It's just shit happens. Life happens. And it's just how you want to handle it. And, well, for and, me, and, 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 and for me, it didn't destroy me. I still had a great time. You know, we, we went to Disneyland, went to Disney World. Uh, we did a, a last-minute Disney cruise that I just happened to throw in there. I still had a great time. And would I do it again with you? Absolutely. I'm. We're going to do it again, you know? So right. it's like it's, it's not that where it – when you use the term that it, it destroys people, I mean, I personally, it doesn't, I can't speak for anybody else, but I'm only speaking for me. It hasn't and it, it, it'll never will. Well, and, and, and there's nothing wrong in my opinion of sacrificing and maybe putting yourself through something to, 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 to give your family or loved ones or people you care about a great experience. And that's what you were doing. Exactly. First. You were self-sacrificing so I can have a great Walt Disney World trip for my first time. And so Vash could have that experience and, Correct. You, and Mindy and we, you were sacrificing for that. I don't see that as a like toxic behavior. Necessarily. Like it's not, you were, you were, you were trying to figure it out so we could have a good time and be, and be um just just family on a trip basically right um, and a lot of people do that right like the, the father who wants to get their kid to disney world for the very first time will, will go through all kinds of hoops and struggles and maybe even goes into some debt but the, but for that one moment where their little daughter their her face lights up when she meets cinderella or face lights up when she's watching the fireworks that was all worth it do you understand exactly There's these moments where it's like the money doesn't matter sometimes and i get it like you don't want to be completely irrational about it. you don't want to like lose your home or like you lose right. everything over it but i think most people most reasonable people don't get to that level they make sacrifices yes they may be going to debt 
But you know what? That experience, you can you can you can pay off your credit card, but you'll never have that first experience where your little kid gets to meet Mickey for the first time. That's a memory you'll have forever. And, and I was basically in Clark W. Griswold mode. Like like that was like me. Like I was trying to because as I said, I've been to Walt Disney World many of times. Right. You know, and I know I'll be there many more times. But it was like in that moment with it being your first I wanted to experience your first time i right. wanted to experience uh dre's first time back in in how long 20 years I, I wanted to be like that 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 vip tour guide sort of sport sort of speak like that was my main goal because it's as i said it started out as a 10-year anniversary and i was like okay well let's kind of change this theme up a bit because obviously this isn't the route that it's gonna go so right. it's like and again i could have easily said to you fellas which you both had mentioned to me hey if you want to put this off we can wait you could, and it, right. I didn't want to. It was like this was not going to stop me. This was not going to be a burden. It was going to be a fun-filled vacation. And it's it's like you know what? I'm going to retheme it. We're going to change it up. I'm going to be going through some obstacles along the way, more than what I thought. But it's like in the end, was it still worth it to me? Absolutely. Well, and the Clark Griswold analogy is perfect. <laughs> You know, it's perfect. There's struggles along the way. There's a lot of drama. There's a lot of issues getting to that point. But at the end of the day, you had experiences with the people you care about. And that's what matters most. Jake, uh, any opinions on, on this particular situation? Uh, or I'll, just, I'll just close out real quick. I got to bounce in a minute here. I, I was not paying attention to the time. Um, but I think I would close out my time on the show just by saying – when it comes to Disney adults and when it starts to get fucking weird for me, <laughs> um, personally, this is just my personal subjective opinion, is is when you tie yourself to something and it be it does become part of your identity or you choose it as a team and you're going to go down with that team no matter what. Right. And it's like that to me starts to get into this irrational this irrational uh, mindset. Like if all of a sudden you know, Disney came out tomorrow and endorsed something horrific, like said, like, you know what? We're pro terrorists. You know, you'd be like, well, if, if you're, if you are, if you still say like, Oh, that's cool. I love Disney. I don't care if they, if they say that. Right. That to me would start to signal like, okay, wait a minute. You've chosen a team that is going to go down a, a nefarious road and you're going to follow them down that road. And everyone's right. going to have a different opinion on what nefarious means. Like we see that all the time with people. But I think like Jonas was hitting on the identity part of it. Like if, if your identity is rooted in Disney or Harry Potter or peanuts, <laughs> the comic strip peanuts, whatever it is, if it's so rooted in that thing that without that thing, you would feel like a hollow shell of a person. Right. I think that's when you should probably start to think like, well, wait a minute. Have I taken this too far? Is the only place where I can find joy in this thing? Is the only place where, what if that thing was taken away from you? What if that thing went down the wrong course? What if that thing became uh, inaccessible to you? I think that's to me where I would say like, that's where it starts to get into that fucking weird territory. Wow. Um that's right. Hundred percent. And we're actually that's basically the end of the video. So we're gonna wrap, we're gonna close it up. Um, so we'll, we'll I'll, I'll get your opinion on what's fucking weird, George, and I'll, I'll say mine, and we'll close it up. But before we do that, I just want to say too, I want to thank the fellows over there at that park place um, for the video. Fascinating conversation. Really glad that we were able to kind of break it down, analyze it, and kind of give our two cents. I also want to say here too, as fans. I think we have a lot more in common than than, than not common, yeah. right? And one thing I, I, I want to bring up is one of their friends, uh, one, of, one of the friends of, of that park place in WD Pro and, and everybody, um, his name is Legal Mindset, right? Hmm. I don't agree with this guy on anything, Disney. I mean, <laughs> anything, man. I mean, if we, if we had a debate on, on Reedy Creek or any of this stuff, I'd probably be on a completely opposite spectrum of Legal Mindset. But you know what? We have common ground, Legal Mindset and I. I'm going to go ahead and play a quick little clip and we'll talk about it at the end. And I like Asia. I like Asian women. They're super hot. I like Asian food. And uh, the cost of living is here and it's super safe. So hey, I knew I knew that was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to agree with that, man. I also think Asian women are super hot and I love Asian food. So, hey, as much as we disagree, common ground. <laughs> common ground. <laughs> George, what is what makes it fucking weird for you? Disney adults, what makes it fucking weird? Okay, so what makes it fucking weird for me is okay, so as I had mentioned, the the people that do this 
abundance amount of complaining. And again, not just normal criticism, but I mean abundance amount of complaining about every little single thing of every little detail. And then the next day they're in the parks as if like nothing bothered them. And then it's like, mm-hmm. then they, in the moment, they're having fun, they're having a great time, and then they go back and they report on it and they say, oh my god, this happened and this happened. I was like, well, it, weren't you just having a good time? Now you're complete. It's like a Jekyll and Hyde sort of thing. It's like, yeah. you don't know which way you're getting. On top of that, too, now, I'm a little bit biased with this, so I'm going to try to <laughs> try to say, I don't mind with adults meeting characters, you know, and what have you, but when you have single adult men by themselves waiting in line to meet the princesses <laughs> that to me is just a little bit fucking weird, fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no i get it no i i think i think it, it creeps into weird territory when it almost like yeah like if you're if you're a grown-ass man right and you're you're behaving like like literally like a child like i think that's where i get uncomfortable right mm-hmm. It's like, come on, dude. You know, you can be into this stuff, but you don't have to like sacrifice your your masculinity and your in your adulthood for it. You know what I'm saying? That gets a little weird. Like you said, George, I kind of see that a little bit here and there. Um, there's some weirdness. I think like we talked about earlier with like the religious aspect of it, when people start to worship it like a religion, that's fucking weird. Um, and and Jay, to your point, also, if that pie, if, if it, you know, if it's like 80%. <laughs> okay that's a problem you got to be a well-rounded adult a well-rounded person you know and with anything you shouldn't be overly obsessed with anything you should be w- more well-rounded and i think when people kind of get to that point where like you were saying where if you took that out of the equation you would f- they would feel like an empty shell they'd have no personality basically because that is their personality yeah. that's fucking weird so weird. But gentlemen i want to thank you for joining me today that park place want to thank you guys for a fantastic conversation that we were able to kind of break down and, and 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 discuss today jay i will start with you if you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media sir you find me on x at jay Shear. i might be in a conversation with jonas about something i might be in a conversation with dre about something you never know but i'll be over there on twitter <laughs> maybe pro too uh, and i just wanted to give a shout out to those guys and and thank uh, them for generating some good conversation and uh Disney adults is a big topic and I'm glad we got to talk about it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jay. And uh, Mr. Sister George, the Italiano, where can they find you at home, sir? Uh, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter at Disney George. Uh, you could also find me on the podcast, a walk with Walt. And of course you'll find me here on my uh, home base at orange Grove 55 with citrus corner with all the sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to thank everybody at home for joining us today. Comment down below with all your thoughts on everything we talked about, Disney adults, all this crazy stuff. A lot of this is controversial, but you know what? You know, just try to be civil in the comments. Like I said before, we we will not tolerate attacking anyone over there at that park place. Be respectful. That's all we ask. Thank you so, so much for watching. And uh, hey, look, you know what? Since I played the legal mindset clip, we'll close it out full Leo mindset uh, style, right? Uh, we're going to play a little K-pop. I got a crush on you. It's cool. I'm not trying to put a rush on you. I have to let you know that I got a crush on you.